Edge has been a hot area of focus for enterprises and service providers in recent years as AI, 5G and digital transformation efforts change the technology landscape. And one of the names synonymous with the Edge is Intel, with developments such as its Smart Edge portfolio. Well, to get an update on the company's Edge developments, I'm talking today with Renu Navale. Vice President of the Data Platforms Group and General Manager of the Smart Edge Platforms Division at Intel. So Renu, great to talk to you again. Um, a lot of things are emerging as critical enablers for Edge, software being one of them. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what Intel is doing with software for enabling the Edge and more specifically how Intel's Smart Edge offering fits into this picture? First of all, thank you for having me as part of this summit. Um, you're absolutely right. There are many different types of enablers for the edge and software is emerging as one of the most critical ones. When we think about, you know, the edge, first of all, the edge is different from the cloud. The optimizations that are required for the edge in, the ter in terms of, you know, power, space, cost constraints, all of that requires additional uh, capabilities or optimizations and features for the edge. And this is where software is playing a very key role because we're needing to further optimize what used to be cloud native capabilities to make it optimized for the edge and what we call as edge native software. In addition to these optimizations, what we are seeing is that we're seeing a number of diverse workloads needing to converge together for various use cases. And these workloads can be analytics of data in order to lead to insights. It could be IoT specific workloads, industrial, retail, healthcare, cities and transportation. And it can also be network and connectivity workloads, both public and private connectivity, wireless, 4G, 5G, as well as Wi-Fi wired type of multi-access uh, connectivity. And then in addition to that, you know, because of some of the use cases like AR, VR, or cloud gaming, media and video processing are very important. Now, all of this, you know, requires, you know, software optimizations in addition to the underlying silicon or hardware capabilities. And this is where, you know, Intel has been investing tremendously for the last few years. Uh, they have, we have OpenVINO, which is one of our SDKs, one of our most successful SDKs for analytics and insights. Uh, open Visual Cloud for media and video processing. Um, we have the Intel FlexRAM software for layer one radio access um, uh, programming. Uh, and as well as more recently, we have the Smart Edge software for multi-access edge computing within which we have both an open version, a royalty-free open version uh, across both the network edge, which could be access edge locations and near edge locations, as well as the on-premise IoT locations. And then we also have a smart edge um, software, which is um, our commercial offering for private mobility multi-access edge computing, primarily targeting the on-premise edge locations. Being a silicon vendor from in as Intel, we are making tremendous investments in software to enable various edge locations and edge platforms and to work with our partners and ecosystem in order to ensure that they have faster time to market and time to deployments. Now, the edge is very complex. It's fair to say that one size does not fit all. Uh, can you share some insights on how Intel is addressing the diversity of customer requirements and business models? Absolutely. The edge, you know, when you look at the edge, the locations can span across on-premise IOTG and even within on-premise, the requirements for industrial edge could have a lot of real-time determinism, time-sensitive networking type of needs or constraints. Um, some of the, the retail or healthcare could have other types of, you know, uh, requirements or constraints. When you look at the network edge, you know, again, access edge has a lot of real time deterministic capabilities, um, needs to integrate with radio access, 
um, you know, the, the, the virtual DE part, DU part of the, the rear access edge, uh, again, can be very, very not only power and uh, space and cost constraint, but also uh, has you know, the real time deterministic needs. So all of when you look at all of these different locations and the constraints that they have, we have been really focusing on a couple of different ways. One is the underlying hardware and software needs to be composable and modular, and it needs to scale across all of these different locations. In addition to that, it needs to give our partners and customers the flexibility to be able to compose the hardware in a manner such that it addresses the various types of constraints across the different edge locations. So in addition to this composability of hardware and software, we also need to make sure that our software is you know, cloud native, which means we need to be able to provide the cloud-like agility and programmability that even the developers at the edge are looking for. In fact, many of the edge developers are originally cloud developers itself. So, so that cloud-like agility, performance, programmability, ease of use, and experience is extremely important across all of these um, edge locations. Now, in addition to this, what we need to make sure is we are also providing the tools or the capabilities to enable the ecosystem to have an ability to automate and orchestrate across multiple edge locations, not only across multiple edge locations or clusters of edge nodes, but also from the edge to the cloud and back from cloud to the edge. So all of these different layers need to be provided in a very flexible, modular, and agile manner to our ecosystem and partners. If you look at what Intel is trying to do with the Smart Edge portfolio, we are really trying to address it in this manner. Um, we're looking at not only the um, you know, the underlying modular composability of the hardware and software, but also ensuring that the software is cloud native. So it's completely based on a certified Kubernetes uh, underpinning. Uh, and in addition to that, we have a number of edge native or edge optimized building blocks, building blocks spanning data plane, telemetry, resource orchestration, our multi-access edge computing efforts, um, analytics, media, um, real-time capabilities for either industrial or real-time optimizations for access edge. All of these different building blocks are again provided as you know microservices enabled or cloud native enabled um, uh, modules such that our ecosystem can very easily consume it. And, and last but not least, again, working with our ecosystem to either provide you know, modules that can enable them to easily automate and orchestrate across the edge and from the edge to cloud, or you know, as part of our smart edge um, offering, ensuring we, we are providing a controller that can either be on premise or in the cloud to enable our enterprises to provide you know, private mobility or multi-access edge computing, computing for their enterprise on-premise um, uh, uh, edge deployments. Now, it can take a long time to design and take something to market in the edge sector because of the complexity and diversity. Uh, how is Intel helping partners to accelerate their time to market? Now, when we look at you know who our ecosystem is, you know we we really are looking at a pretty vast ecosystem. Uh, our OEMs, ISVs, OSVs, SIs, um, even our end uh, service providers, like both our cloud service providers as well as our con service providers. What we're seeing is that our ecosystem, typically at least from Intel, they consume our hardware and software in two ways. One is the what we call the edge builders because they have their own solutions and products and they that they want to build. So they consume our ingredients or our assets and use that to build their own products and solutions. And for that, we have our smart edge toolkit, which is smart edge open toolkit, which is royalty free cloud native can be either consumed as building blocks or as a whole in the form of an experience kit um, that, you know, that our edge builder ecosystem can consume. 
there's another part of the ecosystem especially our enterprise and customers who do not want to build their own products and solutions instead they want to buy a fully productized commercial um, edge software and for that we have our smart edge commercial software that our enterprises can buy and install or deploy at their on-premise edge locations now regardless of whether it's open or commercial we're really focused on you know three different vectors that almost all our customers care about one is economics they want time to market they want to reduce their own internal development or testing or integration efforts and they want to be able to recognize their revenue in a rapid way so from a smart edge open perspective you know we want to address that by basing our software on certified kubernetes so this again helps to ease the burden of you know either access validation or testing um, we also provide it you know in the form of a experience kit which is a pre-integrated pre-validated um, install playbook with ansible scripts and helm chart so this really allows for very seamless you know ease of use or adoption and then the third vector is around experience which means we want to make sure again through these experience kits we are delivering world-class self-enabling developer experience so that has been another huge focus of delivering the experience kits to our smart edge open partners one good example of you know an experience kit that we actually recently released is the private wireless experience kit you know when you think about on-premise private wireless deployment you're really looking at a self-sufficient network that's deployed on premise and this has you know inherent capabilities for not only just network workloads but also very application specific workloads and all of this has to very seamlessly deliver multi-access edge computing now this can get very complex for the enterprises uh, on premise when they have to think about you know the radio access network the wireless core network and their existing it or ot application capabilities all of that needing to come together and this is where you know our smart edge open private wireless experience kit comes in because what we've pulled together is a kubernetes based cluster and that can hit you know the right level of performance for you know an end to end 5g private wireless network it lets our customers run a complete vran stack across all layers layer 1 layer 2 and layer 3 it's integrated with a DU that is delivered by Intel Flex RAN and a CU from Radisys. And there's also a 5G distributed UPR in addition to the control plane. And then there are edge applications delivering the IT and OT workloads very seamlessly. So this experience kit, you know, really helps to provide a very opinionated blueprint for our ecosystem partners and customers in order to really address this type of complexity in pulling together network functions, edge application workloads, and really helping converge, you know, uh, IT, OT, and communications technology or CT workloads. And this is, this is probably one of the most complex task for edge deployments is really bringing all of these different types of workloads together. Now, service providers will be key to delivering services at the edge. Uh, can you talk about some of the early deployments and engagements with key communications and cloud service providers? Sure. So uh, as can be evidenced by, you know, a lot of the, when you look at the, um, the announcements that are going out or the PR that's going out, uh, there are a lot of announcements by both our telco operators or the communication service providers as well as even the cloud service providers. And, I, and we believe you know, both of these types of service providers are going to be very critical and integral to delivering edge. And from the Intel side, we have been collaborating with both, you know, both parts of the ecosystem. Uh, and we have some you know, early wins with some very interesting use cases. And, le and let me give a few examples, right? Um, on the smart city front, for example, we have, you know, we have had very deep engagements with Celnex, which is a, a Europe-based MNO, 
and they recently enabled um, smart edge open along with a lenovo place platform and an orchestration software from nearby computing to really put together an end-to-end -end scalable architecture for smart city deployments and they actually deployed this at the city of barcelona um, another use case that's actually gaining momentum which is kind of near and dear to my heart is smart agriculture um, the Sonomish County, you know, what they did is they have a project called 5G Food Resiliency Project. And they launched this with the support of Intel and several other partners from the 5G Open Innovation Lab. And this actually leverages our SmartEdge commercial software. And they were able to really use 5G to take it from farm to table. And this project in Sonomish County is in, you know, the Washington state. And this project will really start to develop, you know, commercial use cases to work with the farmers on using 5G edge and, and cloud uh, and networking or and cloud technologies all together in order to really drive, you know, what they call as the, the food resiliency um, capabilities or project. Uh, from a cloud service provider perspective, you know, we have been engaged very deeply with Google. Uh, in fact, earlier this year, there was an announcement um, with Google where we started to engage with them, uh, you know, on optimizing, uh, you know, the Google Anthos and Google Cloud Platform, along with some of the software assets for SmartEdge Open, as well as our FlexRAN software on Google Cloud, such that it can be offered, you know, in the public networks for both the RAN workloads, as well as the, even the mobile core um, workloads. So very deep uh, collaboration um, with Google here. And, and last but not least, right, some of our best traction has actually been in PRC. Um, we have a leading service provider, China Unicom, in PRC, who has been leveraging our SmartEdge open software, you know, to what they have done is they have used the software to build their own 5G multi-access edge computing platform as a service. Now, what CUC wanted to build was a very flexible multi-cloud edge platform. So that would run not only 5G workloads from China Unicom, but also they wanted to make sure that it can support diverse application workloads from even other service providers, particularly the cloud service providers. So actually Tencent, which is a cloud service provider in PRC, is, uh, is running some of their, uh, you know, their media and visual cloud applications on this China Unicom Edge uh, Pass. And they really, and they ha already have 100 plus deployments across three or four different districts within China. Now this is, uh, in my opinion, just the tip of the iceberg in our journey to the edge. Uh, and we're just starting to see, you know, the beginning of the different types of edge deployments. And in my opinion, you know, not only are we going to see a lot more deployments, but we are going to see use cases we had never seen or heard of before. Like the agriculture one is a great one. I would have never, you know, a year ago or even two years ago, I have never thought of agriculture as being one of the top use cases for bringing 5G and edge together. And, and that's what I, I predict that we will start to see is a variety of different use cases, a variety of new ecosystem players, uh, and definitely a lot more edge deployments um, as we all as an industry continue on our journey to the edge. Well, great insights there into how Intel is helping its customers at the edge. Renu, great to talk to you today. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And don't forget to watch the other programs in the Intel Network Builders vSummit series. As well as Edge, we're taking an in-depth look at the network core, vRAN and security. Thanks for watching and goodbye.